Hi, I'm Musar. I've been working with Phaseplant since before it was released, and today I want to share with you a small but in-depth sampling of the ways that you can utilize the audio rate modulation features within Phaseplant for sound design. A common request that comes in on the Kilohertz Discord is to allow the Hertz mode of the modulators like the LFO and the random module to go faster than 100 Hertz, which is itself now twice as fast as the version 1 limit of 50 Hertz. However, you've always had access to low frequency oscillators that go faster than that. They're just called oscillators. In most cases, you're just looking to modulate with the wrong source. Here's two quick examples. First, a vocal loop that I've loaded into the Phase Plant Sampler. If I wanted to give this loop a trance gate effect, I could do that in a few different ways. If the pattern repeats, I could just program it into the trance gate snap-in. If I want a bit more control, I could draw a pattern with a curve output generator and adjust the ADSR values. or modulate the rate and depth of an LFO attached to the level of the sampler, using the different shapes to smooth out the gate. But what if I want to go faster than 100 Hz? If you audio rate modulate a generator's level by 50%, you've just set up amplitude modulation. Turn the harmonic multiplier for the modulator to zero and adjust the shift value for manual Hz control, or try harmonic multipliers between zero and one to get rhythmic pulses that change based on the pitch of incoming notes. In this second example, let's say I want a dirty, noisy Super Saw lead, basically the Super Saw killer that AU5 posted in this tutorial, which you can find a link to in the card in the description below. In some synths like Serum, you have access to this chaos modulation source that randomly steps between a range of values based on the rate control, which can go super fast, into audio rate even. Faceplant has its own chaos modulator, a noise generator. As I talked about in my white noise versus pink noise video, noise is just a random signal, so we can use that to do random modulation at audio rate. To have the range of speeds that Serum's chaos modulator has, switch over to the stepped noise option. You can adjust any of the pitch or frequency values, semi-cent if harmonic is set to a multiplier greater than zero, harmonic and or shift, to get to whatever speed you desire. Once that's set up, we just map the noise to whatever we want to modulate. In this case, the pitch of three saw oscillators panned left, center, and right. And we're good to go. This modulation is also per unison voice, so if your CPU can handle it, try cranking up the unison on the oscillators, or even globally. Serum's unison can be pretty resource hungry, but its chaos modulators are incredibly efficient. Conversely, Phase Plant is much more economical with how it doles out unison voices, but the precision of the audio rate modulation makes it more CPU intensive. Just something to bear in mind when comparing the two. While you could do this before in Snapkeep and Multipass, it was still a little finicky. 
but if you're working entirely inside a phase plant, you can now use the audio follower modulator to do audio rate modulation to any snap-in or host in the effects lanes. Credit for this goes to Matt Zoe. I'll post a link to his video in the card description. Here's the basic setup. Route the generator you want to use as an audio rate source out to the sideband using an envelope or curve output generator, and make sure the output gain is set to unity. Add an envelope follower, set it to the sideband, and make sure you have the analysis on peak mode with the attack and release as fast as possible. This will be way too fast for the visualizers to render properly, but don't worry. Set the lane you want to do audio rate modulation on to poly effects, and you're all but done. I should note that these modulators are bipolar by default, so you'll either need to set the audio follower to bipolar or use rectification to turn the waveform unipolar. You can do this by copying your modulator and using the copy to modulate the level by 50 or 100%. For example, noise, signs, and triangles work best at 100% level modulation, and saws and squares work best at 50%. Just keep an eye on how that will affect the rate. The wave might be playing twice as fast as you expect. From there, just route as your heart sees fit. If you can route the audio follower to a parameter, you should route the audio follower to the parameter, provided you have a limiter somewhere in the signal chain to keep yourself from going deaf from a misclick. Here's a few examples of how you could use audio rate modulation to expand upon your current modulation capabilities. <laughs> If you're not already aware, many of the warp modes you have come to know and love from synths like Massive, Serum, and Vital are also inside a phase plant. If you load up a wavetable generator and go to the modulator wavetables, you have three categories of modulator tables to work with, bend, remap or asim, and window. You may have noticed that there's no sync or windowed sync modes, but those exist too. We'll talk about them when we discuss remap modulators. With the bend modes, modulate the phase of your carrier, the wave you want to warp, by 20%, plus or minus 1%. Soft at 19% is almost identical to the bend plus minus mode in Serum, and hard at 21% is a more squared off version of the same effect. Remap and asymmetric modulators require a bit more setup, so to demonstrate, let's circle back to setting up sync. Oscillator sync involves tying the wave cycles of two oscillators together, so that even when the linked oscillator is at a different pitch, the start of their wave cycles still line up. Using the analog oscillator, we can see how more and more copies of this saw wave get crammed into the space of that first saw. When I have sync set to whole number values, we get something similar to adjusting the harmonic multiplier by that same amount. Anywhere in between, we get these harsh, buzzy tones that add a ton of aggression and character to the sound. Unfortunately, this knob only exists on the analog oscillator. So how do we get access to it elsewhere? What we're trying to do is affect the phase of our carrier wave. So let's take an analog saw, modulate the carrier's phase, and we're there. This works because of the ramping nature of a saw wave and the 360 degree rotation of a waveform. I know that most oscilloscopes display the waveform as a horizontal line from beginning to end, but they are cycles after all, so they loop around like circles. A sawtooth waveform is often referred to as a ramp because it increases in a linear fashion from negative one to plus one, then jumps back to negative one and repeats. When you modulate the phase of a waveform, you're changing the current position of the waveform relative to that starting position. So minus 180 degrees, to 180 degrees will give us that full 360 degree rotation from minus one to plus one. Do you see where this is going? A saw wave going at the same speed as our carrier wave is going to bring us through an additional 360 degree rotation, two cycles for the price of one. With that out of the way, let's get back to sync. 25% phase modulation is about a sync of X2. If we adjust any of the frequency parameters of our modulator, we can keep the phase modulation amount the same while adjusting the cycles of our sync. To complete the setup, let's set the harmonic multiplier of our carrier to zero, so its wave cycles lock into our modulator's wave cycles. 
our oscillator sync is complete. Now you can sync wavetables and samplers just like the analog oscillators. ASIM and remap function the same way. 25% phase modulation, carrier at harmonic zero. I should note that when doing sync or really any phase modulations, there will still be a tiny bit of discontinuity at the zero crossing, a consequence of digital audio. Most digital synthesizers solve this by having a dedicated sync algorithm that accounts for the discontinuity, but all hope is not lost. The window tables exist to help smooth out any DC offset issues or other discontinuities that emerge from audio rate modulation. Going back to our sync example, whole numbers cleanly reset, but all the values in between cause extra clicks every wave cycle and can add up to a little or a lot of undesirable noise. If I take a sine wave with the phase at negative 90 degrees, so the waveform starts at minus one, and modulate the amplitude of our carrier by 50%, so minus one amplitude on the sine equals 0% volume, the amplitude of our carrier fades in and out at the same rate, silencing those annoying clicks. Using a window modulator functions the same way, but allows you to control how soon the waveform fades out. As a side note, this makes building a granular sampler and phase plane a lot cleaner. If you'd like to create your own warp modes, hey, sorry to do the little editing cut in twice in a row for these videos, but I noticed while working on this that there's a little bit of inaccurate information here. Um, I still think that the information I give is correct in terms of what you can do with it, but the exact numbers that I give aren't perfectly accurate. I'll go more into that in another video, but just keep in mind that not all the numbers are correct and you might have to fiddle with some things to get it right for your system. Either by taking them from other synths or making up your own, you just have to apply the alterations to a saw wave. For example, if I wanted to use the formant warp mode from Vital, I can use the saw waveform in the basic shapes with the phase and phase random as both at zero to get there. You can use the initial sawtooth wave if you want, but keep in mind its phase will be inverted from the basic shapes version. The cleanest way to do this, as recommended in the serum manual, is with a 22 hertz fundamental over a span of 11.6 seconds. This would be equivalent to an F an octave below the sub bass range, F minus one or F zero, depending upon your DAW, detuned down by 22 cents for approximately eight bars at 165 BPM with a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. That gives us 256 cycles of 2048 samples per cycle, which most wavetable synths are built around. Set one of the LFOs to an upwards ramp with a synced rate of eight bars, modulate the warp amount 100%, and render that eight bar section however is most convenient for you. Depending upon your DAW and how you set it up, you may have to edit the exported waveform to remove any silence at the beginning and any extra half completed cycles at the end in order to get the best results. Once that's done, open up the wavetable editor and phase plant and drag in or load the sample. Adjust the pitch analysis if it's not exactly correct and use naive correlation mode to preserve as much of the original audio as possible while making sure it works within the kilohertz ecosystem system. Since these are effectively remap tables, set your carrier to a harmonic multiplier of zero and modulate its phase by 20%, or minus 20% if you use the default vital saw. Now as you scan through the remap format wave table, it functions almost identically to the way it works in vital. The real benefit of using warp modes in this manner is how you can now stack and modify those warp modes with additional audio rate modulation. Instead of having to apply a warp mode, resample that to a new wave table, and apply a secondary warp mode, just apply the warp modes together, or apply one warp mode to another. You could even combine the two techniques we just discussed with this one. Send a modulator to the audio follower for warp mode modulation, or have an FFO attached to the wavetable position to go from slow, audible modulation to a completely new tone. The Yamaha DX7 synth is a touchstone in the history of digital synthesizers, arguably one of, if not the most well-known synthesizers ever. Featuring six discrete operators, an oscillator and amplitude envelope pair, the DX7 set the standard for almost all the digital FM synths to follow. FM8, Citrus, and Operator are all examples of the same setup, and FM synthesis is considered a bare minimum on most contemporary digital synths. 
phase plant being no exception to that. Building your own version of the DX7 is fairly straightforward. A group container, an analog or wavetable oscillator, and an envelope output generator is all you need for an operator. If you ignore the group and output generators and use an envelope modulator on the level of the oscillator, it works the same way. With phase plant's 32 generator limit and a bunch of modulators, you can build up to a 29 operator FM synth, albeit a fairly complicated one to try and navigate. Here's an example of a slightly more reasonable but still very powerful setup. 10 all generator operators and an 11th operator that is controlled with an envelope modulator. If you want to utilize something like FM8's MSEGs, just swap out the envelopes for curves. You're not just limited to phase modulation like in the DX7 either. Linear, multiplicative, and exponential frequency modulation are available by modulating shift, harmonic, and semi-cent respectively. If you modulate the level 50%, you get amplitude modulation. 100%, you get remodulation. There's effectively no limit to the kinds of combinations you can make once you start exploring. To round things off, let's look at how the sideband can be used to do the non-frequency based audio rate modulations at any point in our signal chain. I just mentioned how modulating an oscillator's level gets us amplitude modulation and ring modulation. There just so happens to be a ring modulator snap-in that we can load in the effects chain, and we can route as modulator to be a signal coming from the sideband. Set the ring modulator's dry wet to 50%, and it's the same as doing audio rate modulation on the level at 50%. The phase distortion operates on a similar principle, but for digital FM, aka phase modulation. There are some technical differences between phase modulation and phase distortion, but you can use this to effectively FM your sounds after they've been processed through other effects. Distort and filter a sound, then FM it to add additional harmonics back in. Much like the audio follower modulation, you could already have done this using the external input and the kilohertz host snap heap and multipass, so feel free to experiment with this using other synthesizers or even on audio tracks. Hopefully this video opened up some sound design doors for you. Even if you don't use phase plant, these features could be applied to other synths like Serum or Vital, or in modular environments like VCV Rack. If you have any of your own tricks to add, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Consider throwing me a few bucks if you like this video. It's the best way to support the channel. Otherwise, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get notified of future videos. Leave a like on the video, or maybe even share it with a friend who you think would enjoy it. Don't be afraid to listen and learn, and have a great day.